I want to turn now to talking about the MapGini series of web services from the Ordnance Survey Ireland. The first thing to say here is that MapGini provide a series of web services. These include base maps at various scales, uh, grayscale base maps, discovery uh, series base maps, historic base maps, really a wealth of information that you can use within either your ArcGIS desktop session or within um, ArcGIS web applications such as the ArcGIS Viewer. For free. Now the important thing about MapGenie is that it's an account-based system. You must have an account with Ordnance Survey Ireland in order to use MapGenie and you must access it via the username and password or the token that you're issued. If you are building your own web application using any of the ArcGIS APIs, or if you're building, for instance, an ArcGIS Viewer for Flex application or an ArcGIS Viewer for Silverlight application, you can use the token provided by the Ordnance Survey Ireland to access MapGenie via your web application. Using the token in this way gives you access to the high-speed REST-based access point for MapGenie. and gives you the familiar view of MapGenie that you will have seen in many web applications. I want to emphasize that in this case you're accessing the REST endpoint for MapGenie. Now although you've seen me using a series of REST-based interfaces within ArcMap in the earlier parts of the demonstration, it's important to note that it's currently not possible to access MapGenie from ArcMap through the REST interface. Security considerations mean that as we speak you need to go through the WMS interface to MapGenie when you're using it with ArcMap. In a few moments I'll explain how to set up the WMS interface on ArcMap. But first let's have a look at MapGenie via the WMS interface in ArcMap. So here I've started a brand new ArcMap session and I'm just going to go to my catalog and I'm going to navigate to where I've stored a layer file that references the MapGenie base map. You may remember we used layer files earlier on in the demonstrations uh, with the post-primary school layer. So to bring MapGenie into ArcMap I'm just going to drag and drop this layer file into my map canvas. You will see it loads the MapGenie layers and starts to access uh, the MapGenie data from the Ordnance Survey Ireland server. Now the first time I do this I'm being deliberately slow about it. You can see that it's taking a while um, to actually render the information in the map canvas. The reason for that is that the WMS standard specifies that the data is served in WGS84 by default. Um, and in order to render the image here in WGS84, the entire data set needs to be transformed on the Ordnance Survey Ireland servers into WGS84. And that's why it takes a while to actually load the map image. So obviously you don't want to be waiting that long every time you load MapGenie. And you don't want to be incurring that overhead of doing the projection every time you do a pan and zoom. So the trick here is to change your projection system from WGS84 into the ITM projection system which is also supported by this service. And to do that ArcMap gives you a handy tool <coughs> here called Change Coordinate System. So what this does is it changes the coordinate system of the map canvas into a coordinate system that's supported by the web service being issued by uh, Ordnance Survey. So here I'm going to pick the ITM uh, system and hit OK, ignore the warning. And now we get an ITM MapGenie base map um, within our map canvas. And as we zoom and pan, the response will be much quicker. Now the key point to remember here is that this is not a cached base map. So every time you pan and zoom, the entire uh, data set that's needed to fill the map canvas needs to be re-rendered from the service. 
unlike the REST endpoint, which is cached. So performance on Map Genie via the WMS endpoint can sometimes appear a little bit sluggish when compared to the high-performance REST-based web service. However, there's another trick that I want to show you here that can improve the performance of WMS-based Map Genie when used within your ArcMap session. I'm going to collapse um, the Map Genie layer description here, and I'm going to add a new layer type to the map, which is called a base map layer. A base map layer at this point is an empty holder that tells ArcMap that the layer that you're going to use is a base map, and therefore that it's not going to change regularly during your session, and ArcMap can store it as a cached map layer. So I'm going to just drag and drop Map Genie into my base map layer. Now what this does, as I pan and zoom, it starts caching Map Genie on the client, in other words, within ArcMap. So you saw that took a little moment to refresh, but as I zoom back to where I was, I now get the slippy map performance. So by making a base map layer, you can turn your dynamic um, maps into something approaching a cached base map. And that's a useful trick to know because most people tend to load Map Genie and then work with it at a particular scale or a particular set of scales during their session. Map Genie is not actually changing um, in terms of the data that's in Map Genie is not changing. So you can afford to cache it on the client to get better performance. So Map Genie offer a number of different services. This particular service I'm looking at here is the Map Genie base map at medium scale in ITM. But for more detail, um, I want to bring in the Map Genie base map at large scale. Again, I do this by dragging and dropping from my layer file. Now, as I zoom in, the medium scale service switches off and the large scale service switches on. Just takes a moment to cache it on the client. And if we zoom in here on Ashtown, where the Esri Island office is located, you can see the great detail that comes in from the Map Genie base map layer at large scale. So the key things I've covered here are using your layer files to store references to your Map Genie account, dragging and dropping those onto your map canvas, changing the coordinate system of your Map Genie WMS layer, and also creating a base map layer that caches on the client. This will give you high performance Map Genie base maps within your ArcMap session. So we've seen how we can load Map Genie from a layer file how we can cache it on the client to get this fantastic uh, slippy map performance and uh, the great detail that's available indeed within Map Genie. So really at this point we're using Map Genie within ArcMap exactly the same way as we would use it within a web application. We're getting all of the benefits and none of the drawbacks even though we're using the WMS interface. So the question then becomes well how do we set up the WMS connection to Map Genie in the first place? And that's what I want to deal with now. So in order to set up the WMS interface to Map Genie, the first thing you need is an account. Ordnance Survey Ireland will give you an account on their Map Genie system, and you need to specify whether you want the WMS endpoint or the REST endpoint. In this case, because we're using Map Genie within ArcMap, we want the WMS endpoint in particular. They will set up a username and a password for you that enables you to access the web services endpoints for the various services within Map Genie that you're entitled to. In addition to the username and password, the key pieces of information in here are these WMS web services endpoints. These specify how any system can access the WMS service over HTTPS. I'm going to take you through the process of adding the Map Genie Ortho ITM WMS service to ArcGIS to illustrate um, how to do the, the, the connections in general. 
So I'm going to copy this particular URL. And switching back then to ArcMap. You can actually do this in either ArcMap or Arc Catalog. I'm just going to do it this time through the catalog window in ArcMap. And you can see I'm down here on the GIS servers node um, where we were in one of the earlier demonstrations. And I'm going to add a WMS server in this case. You can see that I previously added um, the WMS for the Map Genie base map large scale that I'm using here in the Map Canvas and the Map Genie base map medium scale that you saw me use earlier on. So I'm going to click on Add WMS Server here. And it will ask me for that URL um, that I just copied and pasted. Paste and when I hit Get Layers, I'll be prompted for my username and password. My username is Doyle E, and my password I'm not going to share with you. And you have an option at this point to save the username and password in your connection, which I'm actually going to do. But you need to be careful about this because if you save the username and password here, it will also be saved in any layer files you create. And when you share those layer files, whoever you share the layer file with will be accessing Map Genie using your username and password credentials, which may be what you want or may be undesirable. So once I supply the username and password, the system connects to Map Genie and accesses the layers that are in, um, in this particular service. And you can see their details. And again, I'm going to save my credentials in here. To create a persistent connection. And you can see that it's now added that ITM web service for uh, the ortho to my catalog. And once again, I can simply drag and drop that into my view. And as I do, I get the Map Genie Ortho ITM service now displaying in my map canvas through the WMS interface. I can either use the Ortho or I can switch off the Ortho to see the base map. Or I can create a composite by dragging the uh, large scale layer up my table of contents so that it displays over. I can either make the layer transparent by a certain amount to see through onto the area of the photograph information. So I get a composite effect, or alternatively, I can set this um, back to opaque. And I can switch off some of the obscuring layers within the Map Genie um, large scale service so that I'm seeing through the layers onto the area of photography. So you can see that within my WMS service here, I have access to all of the sublayers. Indeed, there are many, many sublayers within the uh, Map Genie data structure. This means that if I want to create a customized view of Map Genie, I can do so. So for instance, I could switch off um, all the information to do with buildings, the building annotation, the building lines, and the building polygons. And now I get a Map Genie service without really any building information, just with the land information on. And I can save that as a layer file. And I'm going to call this uh, as it's named, but with no, no buildings. And save that layer file. If I remove this layer now, I can access that customized layer file 
correctly. We're just dragging and dropping it onto the map canvas. And I get the same view back with no buildings or no building information switched on. So before we close, I suppose just a few points in summary. The first point to make is that high performance web accessible web services are not just for web applications. You can actually use them within your ArcGIS desktop sessions also. As you can see here, we're using the WMS service for Map Genie with the medium scale base map. The second point to make is that you can search for thematic data for Ireland via ArcGIS Online. And add data that you find in the form of web services. And you can combine both REST-based web services and WMS-based web services in your ArcMap session. When you have created a web service connection, you can store the characteristics of that connection as a layer file. Bringing back in the layer file would bring back in the connection to the web service exactly as you stored it. In this case, with the REST-based web services for the schools, but also just as easily with Map Genie. Let's bring in the large scale layer here. And now when we zoom in on a particular school, we get the building level detail. Using web services in this way means that you can connect directly to the data providers. You don't need to store the data yourself, you don't need to maintain it yourself, and you don't need to serve it up yourself. The data is always maintained at the current level by the data provider, so you don't need to refresh and update your data sources every time the original data changes. Web services, as we've seen with web applications, can provide a great boost to GIS users. It enables you to get your GIS project started, to use an extensive range of base maps from ESRI or for, from Ordnance Survey Ireland to kickstart your project and then get going using um, either public data that's made available as open data via ArcGIS server web services or your own data which can be stored on your network or served via your own ArcGIS server instance or your own hosted ArcGIS online instance with an ArcGIS online subscription account.